Hi there, Alex here at mixinglessons.com. In this video, we're going to have a look at the difference between pre-fader metering and post-fader metering in Luna. So on your meter here on each of your channels, if you right click, you have the option for your metering being either pre-fader or post-fader. Or if you go into the settings, then here, once again, you can choose whether or not your metering is pre-fader or post-fader. So what is the difference between pre-fader and post-fader? Well, pre-fader metering will tell you the level of the signal before the signal reaches this fader. And post-fader metering will show you the level of the signal after the signal has passed through this fader. So if we play some signal, if we go into post-fader metering first, you can see here that any adjustment that I make to the level of the fader is reflected in the meter. So as I pull the fader down, the meter gets quieter. As I turn the fader up, the level on the meter gets louder. Now, if I go into pre-fader metering, you'll notice that any adjustment that I make to the position of the fader is not reflected in the level that's shown on the meter. So you can see there that I can turn the signal down, I can turn it up, it doesn't make any adjustment to the level of the signal on the meter. And that's because, as I say, in post-fader metering, the meter is showing us the level of the signal after the fader, so it takes into account any adjustments that we've made to the fader, whereas with pre-fader metering, it's showing us the level of the signal before the fader. So any adjustment that we make to the level of the signal using that fader will not be reflected on the level on the meter. Now, why would each of these options be useful? Well, if we look at post-fader metering to begin with, if we are setting the level of a signal, it's useful to see what level that signal is at. So if we start to turn this signal up, we can see there that it's getting quite close to the level of clipping. And if we turn it up all the way, in fact, we can actually make the signal clip and we get this red clip light to let us know that we have overloaded things. So if we clear that clip light, being able to see what happens in relation to us adjusting the level of the fader is really useful. Or you can look at it the other way around. We could turn this right down and then we could see that the signal that's coming out of that channel based on where we've placed the fader is actually quite low. So that's useful information to have. Now, why would it also be useful to be able to see the level of the signal before it has reached the fader or before we've made any adjustments to the level of the signal on the fader? Well, here's one example. Let's say that you do all of your levels at the beginning of the mix. So you set all of the levels on these faders. So let's say this track is actually going to be quite quiet in our mix. Now, as we're mixing, there are multiple stages at which we can turn the level of the signal up or down. So if we look at the waveform for this track, you can see that it's actually quite quiet. So here we could turn the level of the signal up. Now let's actually start the track playing as we're doing this. So we've added just over 10 decibels there. We've turned this up by just over 10 decibels at this point. Let's have a look at the API vision channel strip that this signal is also running through. Here we could add some more gain to the signal on its way into this plugin. Let's also have a look at the level of the signal as it's going into this compressor as well. Now we've increased the level of the signal at a couple of points before it's reached this plugin. So as you can see here, we've now got a lot more compression than we had before or which we would really want. So we can turn the input down so that the compression is at a more optimal level. But we may want to now turn the output up to compensate. So let's add some signal. Let's add some gain, sorry, at the output stage. Now, if we look at our fader, this is in post fader metering. This isn't showing us that the level of the signal is clipping, but if we go into pre-fader metering, you can see there that the signal is most definitely clipping. And if you can hear it, you can hear that it's clipping. So what's happening here is the level of the signal is clipping before it reaches the fader. But in post fader metering, all that meter is telling us is that based on the level of the fader, the signal is at this level. It's not clipping at that point. It's clipping at a point earlier than that. And so by going into pre-fader metering, we can see that. We can see that before the signal has even reached the fader, the signal has clipped. And that gives us useful information because we can then trace our steps, go back and work out where the signal is clipping. 
Now, in an ideal world, as you're doing your mixing, you will be monitoring the level of the signal at each point that you are able to adjust the signal and you'll be optimizing those levels. So you'll be making sure that signals are coming out of plugins as close to the level that they went into the plugin at as possible. But mistakes can happen and you can end up in a situation where something in your mix is clipping. So it can be useful to be able to see what the level of the signal is doing before it reaches the fader and you make further adjustments at that point. Another instance where pre-fader metering can be useful is when you're recording signals into your DAW. Let's say you're recording a drum kit. You may want to make some adjustments to the faders just based on your own monitoring. So you're listening to the signal. Let's say you're recording a drum kit. The snare drum might be a bit louder than you actually want to listen to the kit at when you are recording it. Well, if you're in post-fader metering and you turn the snare drum down, the metering would show you a different level to what the signal is actually coming in at. And so it may be more useful to go into pre-fader metering so that you can make adjustments to the faders for your own monitoring level, but you can still see the level of the signals that are coming into the DAW. And then outside of any instances where you find it's useful to use pre-fader metering, you can use post-fader metering so that you can see what effect the changes that you're making to the faders is having on the signal and you can make sure that things aren't getting too loud or too quiet. Now, if you're somebody who records and mixes music, then I've got three free guides that I think you'll find really, really useful. I've got an EQ cheat sheet, a compression cheat sheet and a vocal recording guide. And you can get all three of those completely free when you head over to mixinglessons.com slash free dash downloads. If you're interested in learning more about Luna, I'll leave a link on screen to a video which I recently made about the versions and bookmarks in Luna. Versions and bookmarks are two different ways of saving your sessions or saving different versions of your sessions or saving your sessions at different points. They're really, really useful and it's a really nice feature in Luna. So I'll leave a link on screen to that video and I would encourage you to check that out. I think you'll find it really useful. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you again soon.